Mr. Peng and what? You, you can take your three cards. Sir, bike sharing is not a new concept, but the advent of mobile technology has allowed bike sharing companies to go dockless. What is new, really new about dockless bike sharing is the proliferation of indiscriminate bike parking. These shared bicycles are usually parked haphazardly at void deck, footpath, leaf lobby, stairways, and I saw two of them parked in the middle of Nico Highway yesterday. The amount of fines collected from bike sharing operators for not clearing their illegally parked bicycle and number of bicycles impounded by LTA as reported in the news last month is probably just the tip of the iceberg due to the lack of resources to monitor the indiscriminate parking and enforce and enforce the fine. In last October, LTA had initiated an agreement with bike sharing company to implement Joe fencing by end 2017 to rein in this to rein in indiscriminate parking by errant riders. I am not sure if Joe fencing for bike sharing is in operation already, but from the looks of it, I doubt it is. Joe fencing will not solve the problem of indiscriminate bike, uh, bike parking. It just confines the problem to a designated area and the boundary is not even accurate. Joe fencing may just turn into Joe dumping over time as the designated area will be flooded with shared bikes, causing severe congestion and safety concerns, especially for elderly residents. Adding QR codes to complement Joe fencing is an improvement, but such codes can be easily copied with a camera and a printer, and you will have a list of parking stations to scan on demand to end your trip, even if you are not at the designated parking lot. And if the authority is going such length to implement QR code Joe fencing to ensure bicycles are properly parked within the designated area, why not just implement a docking station? A quick search on the internet for bike sharing services around the world show that most existing operations in big cities like New York, Melbourne and Paris all come with docking stations. While I do hope the proposed licensing framework would help to rein in indiscriminate bike parking, I am concerned that Joe dumping will be the next biggest headache for bike sharing services. Sir, it was reported that there are about 100,000 dockless share bicycles out there. How many QR code Joe fencing stations will be required to effectively tackle the indiscriminate parking problem? I hope LTA can share more on this because dockless bike sharing has turned Singapore into one giant bicycle parking lot. Second cut. Sir, the proliferation of personal mobility device or PMD and personal mobility aid or PMA in our estate and footpath is phenomenal. PMD allow users, usually with, mo with no mobility issue, to zip from one place to another faster. Some owners of PMD even use them to piggyback their children from school, bus stop or train station. PMD basically saves time for the users. PMA, on the other hand, allows our elderly Singaporeans to get out of their home to, home to eat, shop, and just watch the world go by. It allows them to continue to do the simple activities of community living, without which they may be confined to their homes. In short, PMA allows our elderly citizens with mobility issue a quality of life. I'm seeing more PMA in my estate now. I'm happy to see these elderly residents living independent lives. However, moving about in a PMA can be challenging on existing footpath. PMA comes in all shapes and sizes. All of them are larger than PMD, and they move a lot slower. The footpath along the roads are certainly not PMA friendly. I have seen some PMA moving precariously close to the edge of some busy footpath, and I was worried they may tip over. The footpaths from the nearest bus stop, train station, hawker centres, suburban malls, neighbourhood centres, etc., to the nearest HDB block, all private estate need to be widened soon to accommodate this mobility aid. I also urge LTA to do another round of initiative to mop up those remaining spots with barriers so that PMA user can have a smoother connection on our footpaths. Last, I also hope LTA can initiate a whole of government approach to accommodate PMA in our society, which in my view has given our elderly a fresh breath of life in their sunset years. Third part. Sir, I have spoken about making signalised junctions safer in the Committee of Supply debate in 2013 and again in 2015. Traffic lights are supposed to give all road users a sense of order, safety and security. Our children are taught from young by their parents and in school to wait for the green man signal to come on before they can cross the road. When the lights are in your favour, it must surely mean it is safe to cross. But as it turns out, this is not a given, depending on the traffic junctions you are at. The presumption of safety is lost when signalised junctions are programmed with shared green time. Such junctions allow vehicles to turn when there are no pedestrians crossing during the green man phase. This, according to the Minister, is to ensure smoother traffic flow on our roads. 
According to the ministry, there were on average about three fatal accidents and 40 injury accidents per year at signalised junctions involving a pedestrian or cyclist and vehicle turning right during the green man phase. Although the ministry did not have the breakdown of whether this accident happened at what type of junctions, 90% of our signalised junctions are programmed with shared green time. I'm sure there are many unreported near misses as well. Last October, LTA was reported to be taking steps to to make such signalised junction safer after some pedestrian involving vehicles knocking down pedestrian who had the right of way came to light. There were two cases cited in the news, one, one of which was fatal. It was reported that the fatal accident happen, happened at a signalised junction with shared green time. Not only pedestrians are not protected at such junction, they may also be assigned 15% blame as a court of appeal ruling in 2016 had shown, even though the lights were in their favour. Sir, Green man signal at such junction cannot guarantee safety for, for pedestrian, then the anomaly must be resolved. The president of the Automobile Association of Singapore was quoted to have said, overseas researchers have shown that pedestrians are better protected with the implementation of split phase lights. Statistics has, have also shown that there is a larger decline in pedestrian incident as well as multi-vehicle crashes when green man time is not shared. I truly believe that ensuring a smoother flow of traffic on our road will not cultivate a road safety culture. Enforcing a little patient by doing away with shared green time at signalised junction, on the other hand, will ensure road safety by default. 